Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody, to Agatha Christie, the ABC Murders, episode 2. In the previous video, we've already concluded that theft is not the motive for the crime. And then, second, uh, Mrs. Asher was killed on site. And the third clue is, third conclusion is... A busy guide on the counter was left by the murderer, by the killer, as a signature. Okay, let's start. Let's continue our game. Let's talk to the fruit seller, shall we? Four pence a letters, a lovely lot of letters, four pence only. This woman appears to be a smoker. An extinguished cigarette. Box of matches. A full ashtray. She's a big smoker. She must have been a customer at the tobacco shop. I heard a sewing machine. How much are your lettuce, please? A lettuce? That'll be five pence, kind sir. Five pence? No way. You said it earlier. Four pence! Five pence? That's right. Maybe so it's slightly hard of hearing. I heard you shouting a lovely large lettuce, four pence only, earlier. Did I? Well, I must have been mistaken, begging your pardon. But if I said four, it's four. Why not take two for eight? No, thank you. I was only asking. Did you know Alice Asher well? And for starters, who are you? I'm Hercule Poirot, the detective. Tch, you're foreign, that's for sure, with your accent and your odd way about you. And you'll hear about Alice's murder, I suppose. Well, I've nothing to say to you. Did you speak to the victim yesterday? No, I never saw her. Please, try and help me, madame. Why should I help you? For your beautiful moustache? <laughs> Come on, move along now. You're scaring away my customers. Please, do not be ridiculous. I know that you went to the tobacco shop yesterday. Well? It is your duty to tell me if you saw something unusual. Who do you think you are telling me what to do? Get away from my stall! She's mad at me, I'll say. How dare she mocking my mustache? A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. We have to think a way that she willing to talk to us. Oh, you again? I've nothing to say. Just why so serious, madam? Why Strawberries, so six pence a pound. <laughs> hey, Poirot. Is the greengrocer causing trouble? I'll sort her out. No, please, leave her, Chief Inspector. I'll get her to talk later. I've found the victim's niece. She's waiting for you in the back of the shop. Thank you, mon ami. I'll question her. What was Mrs. Asher doing when she was killed? A cigarette packet near the victim's hand. Packets in the model on self. She has just one wound at the back of her head. The murderer probably pretended to be a customer. He hit the shopkeeper from behind as she turned around to serve him. So, she was taking a packet of cigarettes from the shelf. 
strawberries. Get your delicious stra- Dash! A puddle. How clumsy. <laughs> Sorry, Parrot. Your shoes are wet. Dash! A puddle. How clumsy. <laughs> I did it again. I'm so sorry. This this place is run down. Empty shops for rent. Crumbling shop fronts. Oh, rubbish. This is a really cutthroat neighborhood. Anyone could have committed the crime. What? Anyone can really commit the crime? Wow, it's dangerous. Four pints of lettuce, strawberries. Jap had the body removed out of respect for the victim's niece. His attention is commendable. Ooh. Is her grief sincere? Ooh. Let's look. Handkerchief? Lowered eyes. Modest black clothes. She appears to be very upset. She's dressed in mourning. She looks fragile. Okay, sincere. You were very fond of your aunt, am I right? She was the only family I had since my mother died. So, she doesn't have any families left. Your aunt did not have any children, is that correct? No. She was separated from her husband. What do you think about Franz Asher, your aunt's husband? He never left her alone. Poor aunt. She used to drop by all the time and make a scene. Oh, bad husband. You are not very surprised when you heard what happened? Oh, but I was. You see, it was a nasty piece of work, but up until yesterday it was just empty threats. He shouted a lot, but she wasn't afraid of him. Why, he used to slink away when she turned on him. He was afraid of her, if you like. Prince Asher was afraid from his wife. Did you haunt enjoy good airs? She had a bad throat, but she was well cared for by a doctor in London. Does Franz Asher work? All he's done for years is drink and gamble, but he used to be a very good cabinet maker. What does he live on? My aunt used to give him five shillings a week. So he always kept money from her. Did Franz Asher extort this money from her? No, no. She didn't let him intimidate her. She gave the money quite willingly. He was a husband. She couldn't leave him with nothing. I understand. You have been of great assistance, mademoiselle. Please take this young lady home. My pleasure. Well, this Franz Asher does not seem to be quite so dangerous as Jap says. And since Alice Asher gave him money regularly, it was not in his interest to kill her.
Is that her husband, the fixed up husband? We have to wait for him to sleep it off. He's all yours, Poro. There are a few things I need to check. Mm -hmm. There must be some way of sobering him up. I wonder what his wife used to do. He must have scared the customers away. What about the vinegar out of the shop that we found? It's Ali Sasha's notebook. Ah, that's interesting. It probably contains information about our possible debtors and creditors. Okay, that's interesting. Uh -huh. Bodley, the fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative thanks to this piece of information. Mary Drower was telling the oh. truth. Way to go. Mrs. Asher regularly gave money to her alcoholic husband. Okay, hmm. let's confront a box of new oh, stockings. One more clue. What? Stocking? In the tobacco shop? Hmm. There can be a stocking in the tobacco shop. That's weird. Okay, let's continue to confront the fruit shop lady. Your fruit is rotten. What? A foreigner dares to say that? According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. That's a lie. She owed me one pound. I swear. Now, please be so kind as to explain this. Look at my account book. Alice owed me eleven pounds for fruit and vegetables. I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. She owed me one pound, and that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you, but I might ask Chief Inspector Jap to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. Do you want to go to prison? Prison? Now that's not fair. I haven't done nothing. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. <laughs> Listen. I didn't kill Alice, I swear. But it's true that I did go to the shop yesterday. At what time? Six o'clock. She left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. Hmm, six. She goes to the top of your shop. Did you see anything unusual in the shop? No. Well, maybe one thing. There was a railway guide on the counter. Alice didn't sell them. Maybe it's the customer who left it there. You were not allowed? I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. You mentioned medicine. Something for her cough. She used to take it a lot. Who do you think killed her? France. Her scoundrel of her husband. He was always after her for something. Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What I mean is he's <laughs> German. That's even worse. Did you see Franz Asher enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed, and I have better things to do than watch her shop. Okay. Can we establish the time range during which Mrs. Asher was killed? The body was found about 11 p.m. Mrs. Asher was seen alive at 5.30 p.m. So, Alice Asher was killed between 5.30 and 11 in the evening. Can we reduce that time range and why? <coughs> the fruit seller did not see anybody in the shop at 6 p.m. Because of the counter, 
the body is not visible from the tobacco shop's door. So, Alish Asher was killed between 5.30 and 6pm. Okay. I'll just borrow your bottle a moment. Take it. It's what Alice used to sober up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. We've reduced the time. The time of death into 30 minutes only. It's time to wake up the husband. Let's wake him up. <laughs> Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. Mm -hmm. That's rather bold. I've been talking to the neighbors and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything. Am I wrong? <laughs> no. Yeah. We must grill this villain Asher before he falls asleep again. Wakey, wakey, wakey. This man is in rather a bad state. Split, split lip. Black eye. Oh, <laughs> with enough, maybe. Torn cold sleeve. Okay. This man has been fighting and he smells of alcohol. Let's question him. And what he was doing yesterday evening. Care for a cigarette, monsieur? What's that? Scented cigarettes? No thanks. Bien. I was trying to be friendly, but you are quite right. Let us get down to business. You threatened to kill your wife and now she is dead. So what? You shouldn't take things so seriously, sir. Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. So, if things were going so well with your wife, why did you not live with her? She was the one that left. Nothing to do with me, sir. You can't have treated her very well for her to run mm -hmm. away. No, sir, no. I wouldn't say I'd ever laid a finger on her. But it was only normal. She was my what? wife. That's normal? Are you often involved in fights? I don't know what you mean. Hypocrite. Accuse him or make fun of him? Asha, look me in the eye and tell me that you were in a fight. I'm looking. I'm looking. No, I wasn't in a fight. You are right. Looking at the state of you, you did not defend yourself. So someone gave you a good beating. A beating? No way. All right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. You see the state of him? Oh. Very interesting. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Yesterday afternoon, I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. An illegal bet, naturally. Yes, sir. Our dog won. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about six, I think. We were on the other side of town. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife. Hmm? Asher's alibi appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check that he did have a fight with this Tanner on the afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. One thing is certain, Asher was a ruffian who used to beat his wife. But he's not very mm -hmm. educated. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter mm -hmm. signed ABC. Let's resume these things. We know the murderer pretended to be a customer. He did not kill her for money, that appears to be certain. I agree with you on that point. And the murderer left an ABC guide as a signature. Therefore, it's likely he wrote the letter. 
Indeed, but that doesn't explain why and how he did it. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. But as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events. Ooh. Construct the crime course of even reconstruction. The killer uh -huh. enters, the, enters shop. the shop, and then he or she. That's it. Mrs. Asher keeps her back turned. The murderer grabs his walking stick. She turns around. He strikes her violently. He then places the ABC on the counter before leaving. No, the victim has no word to the temple. And the ABC is not the same as in the crime scene. Let us think again, mon cher. I am wrong. Well, okay. Let's try again. The killer enters the shop. Uh -huh. Enter the shop. Then he or she advance. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet her customer. And then uh, attack or ask for as well. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. Turn around. He then places the ABC upside down before leaving. Yep. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Match. Yeah, the construction success. So the killer. Uh, yes, trap. The back of the. Her. Asher has a strong alibi, and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? Mm -hmm. She had no debts. She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She wasn't owed money. Nobody stood to gain anything. No doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Hmm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. Mm. I hope you're wrong for once. Bien. Let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? No. Unfortunately, I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home. There's nothing for us here. The killer struck the victim from the back. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? Hmm. The crime was committed by a man of medium height, with red hair and suspicious eyes. What? He has a slight limp on the right foot and a wart just below his shoulder what? blade. Poirot! Mon ami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion and demand of me a pronouncement a la Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Now for the truth. I do not know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, nor how to set hands upon him. What should we do then? Nothing. Nothing. Just wait. Nothing? Do not be so impatient, Estings. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. I thought I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I would go and see. Maybe Poro was right. This is not the first. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexilon Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. The next crime will be in Bexhill. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? 
To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. And the killer, Mok Poirot, both by saying he or she, won this round. Ah, some cool hair. <sighs> Daily Flicker, June the 22nd, 1935. Battle over control of bank system. What will the government do for money? Andover, murder of a tobacconist. The murder make the headlines. What a shame. Poor oh, Mrs. Asher. So Mr. Asher was not the killer. We still get a little clue for the killer. Andover, Hampshire. Population, 31,200 inhabitants. Let us examine this more closely. The eye leather, obviously. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. But why can I choose it? Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. The I and A same. What next? Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, this I is weird. Yes, the I characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about these case hastings. Nothing must be overlooked. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Try and get our little grey cells to work. What's special about the Andover murder? Andover ABC Guide. The first victim was called Asher. Andover and Alice Asher start with the letter A. Hmm, interesting. What can we guess about the next victim? The letter announcing the Bexhill's crime. So, Poirot, have you found something? Oui, I believe so. But I am afraid it is not enough to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. This victim's name may start with the letter B. Wow. What are the purpose of the killer? A strike murder with alphabet A and then B? Is it coincidence? Poirot was right. 
Our findings cannot stop the mother. What a shame. Oh, it's already past 30 minutes, guys. That's it for today. Inshallah, we will continue on the next video. Stay healthy and safe, guys. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum.